Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors, and today we're going to take a look at filament. Um, to start with, anytime you handle your filament when it's not in the 3D printer, you need to maintain control of the end of the line of filament. Uh, do not let it go. If you let it go, it has the potential to loop under itself under an adjacent adjacent loop on that spool and what happens then is you get tangles when you're printing that uh where it's looped under will begin to tighten just like a knot and it will stop feeding into your printer and you're going to have a failed print so what do you do anytime you do not have this loaded in your printer and you are not actively holding the end of that filament line you're going to all filament spools have these small holes on the side and it's for this specific purpose you want to loop it through two of the holes and that will keep it from um, getting tangled and becoming a ruined roll because once it's tangled the only way to resolve it is unwinding the entire roll and then winding it back up and that just is a pain you never get it wound up smoothly and um, uh, just don't let it happen you know, if it does, you can try it. Uh, it's a pain in the butt to try to unwind it and rewind it up and get it to where it'll feed smoothly then. So just maintain control of it and you'll be fine. Now, when cutting your filament to feed it in your printer, for most printers, it's best to cut it at about a 45 degree angle like you're seeing here. If you're using a bamboo lab, it's actually better to cut it off at a 90 degree angle. So, the next problem you're going to encounter with filaments, and especially PLA, um, they are hygroscopic. That's just a fancy word uh, for that they like to absorb moisture from the ambient air. That moisture is going to bond with the polymer chains in the filament. And as you get more moisture in your filament, you're going to notice things like increased stringing on your prints, imperfections on the print surfaces, inconsistent extrusion. And the reason for this is, as your filament uh, gains more water, that water, when it goes through the heat hot end and the heated nozzle, is going to cook off. It's going to be converted to steam, and that steam has to escape. Well, the only way for it to escape is out the end of the nozzle. Well. In a perfect world, the only thing that should come out the end of your nozzle is filament, molten filament. If you have steam escaping at the same time, that's going to create inconsistent extrusion. It can look like little bubbles in the print. Uh, that steam can push out additional filament, so you get inconsistent extrusion. Um, and it all can also create stringing. So what you want to do is best thing that you can do is prevent this from happening in the first place. Um, if you throw a roll of filament on your printer and you're going to be printing pretty much every day with it, you should be fine just to leave it on your printer. You'll burn through it faster than, unless you're in a really, really humid environment, but you should burn through it faster uh, than it's going to absorb moisture to where it's really going to affect you. If you're going to go a few days without printing, what I recommend is I just take uh, my filament out of my printer and I throw it in a two gallon Ziploc bag. No desiccant or anything like that. I'm just protecting it from the ambient air. If you are going to store your filament for more than a few days, it's really a good idea to go with a vacuum sealed bag. Now, there's a lot of different ones of these on the market. I had one, I'm not gonna name it. it they all work basically the same. Uh, but what it consists of is just uh, heavy-duty Ziploc bags with an air valve, a electric vacuum pump. Some of them are hand pump, but they work terrible. Go with the electric. And you have the option of throwing in some uh, desiccant uh, packets with it, too. Um, I was using one that was around 40 bucks, and it worked great. But I've, a friend of mine recommended me this eSun that's only $22. It works the exact same way. I'm getting the exact same results and it's almost half the price. So go with the cheaper one, save yourself a little money. But all you do here is you're gonna take the filament, just slip it in the special Ziploc bag that has the air valve on it. Um, like I said, desiccant 
it's optional. If, you, if these sets include the desiccant bags, go ahead and if you've got them, go ahead and throw one in. It's not going to hurt anything. Put it in the middle of the filament roll though, so it doesn't interfere with the bag when it contracts down. Um, they will give you these special clips here. What you do is you run this along the Ziploc edge and it makes sure that it's 100% sealed. So it makes sure that there is no air getting into the bag once sealed. Uh, these pumps are usually USB powered, so you can either put it into a wall adapter, a you know, regular wall plug adapter, or in this case, I'm just plugging it into a USB battery pack. Turn it on and hold it down securely. If it doesn't seem like it's drawing air out of the bag, you're not pushing down hard enough. Um, but you do need to push down on that valve while it's doing this pretty tightly, and it's going to suck all the air out of the bag. Once it's done, just pull it off and you've got sealed filament and you can be able to throw that on a shelf and not worry about it then absorbing any moisture. Now, next up, what do you do if your filament has absorbed moisture? How do you fix this? Well, you're going to have to heat it. For PLA, if you can heat it to about 50, 55 degrees, it's going to start releasing that moisture from uh, those polymer chains. Just throwing it in a bag with desiccant is not going to work. Desiccant will not draw moisture out of filament. Desiccant draws moisture out of the ambient air to keep it from getting in the filament. But once it's in, you're going to need to use a dryer like this. Um, this is one I've had for a while. It's an older model, but it works good. Um, it'll have a couple holes in it that you can run the uh, line of filament out. So you can actually put it in these dryers, have the dryer on, and be printing uh, from this dryer box. Um, I don't usually do that. I just throw it in here for about 10 hours, dry it off, take it out, and throw it on my printer. Uh, but these work real easy. You just turn them on. You set your temperature, uh, 55 degrees for PLA, and then you can set your time. So if I've got one that's uh, pretty bad, I'll set it five to six hours is minimum but I usually set it for around 10. Since this does not have a fan on it to circulate the hot air about halfway through I will pull the filament out a little bit and rotate the spool uh, 180 degrees so the side of the spool that was facing upward away from the heating element is now pointing downward towards it and I do that about halfway through just to make sure that the drying is evenly done. Uh, there are some newer ones that have blower fans to better circulate that air. I'll link those in the video description too. But um, I haven't used those yet. They do work well. I know people that have them and really like them. Like I said, this is an older model, but it works pretty good. So until it dies, I'm probably not going to grab a new one. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said, the best way to deal with moisture on the filament is to prevent it in the first place. But if you uh, have to do something, these filament dryers work great. Now, if you don't have a filament dryer, I know people use their kitchen ovens for this. I'm not a huge fan of it simply because of the way the oven works. Um, they don't constantly monitor the temperature like a 3D printer does. Uh, it will heat up and then take periodic temperature readings. So it's very easy for it to overshoot in the heat up phase to overshoot the temperature you've set it to. Um, with filament, you don't want to approach that glass transition temperature because it will ruin your filament. So if you are going to use your oven, uh, preheat it to 50 degrees and let it reach temp and sit at temp for a few minutes before you put your filament in. Definitely don't put your filament in while it's heating up. Um, and again, five to six hours, 50 degrees, you should dry your filament out just fine. So that's it for best tips and tricks for handling filament. Uh, again, if you would, please click, click that like and subscribe button and leave me a quick comment. And I will have another video for everyone soon.